God has asked me to focus on him for the next 40 days and I'm going to be obedient to it. So for the next 40 days, we'll be going through the book of Joshua, Daniel, Revelation, and Malachi verse by verse. You can find our gun content on the History of Weapons and Patreon. Those links are below. But get ready to dig deep into the Word of God. It is going to be an awesome ride. Welcome to the Prophecy of Daniel, where we're going through the book of Daniel verse by verse. So far, we've just gotten to verse 1, but as we talked about the last episode, there is a lot going on in this verse 1 to truly understand what this besieged by Nebuchadnezzar looked like and what was playing out and how Daniel was led off into captivity. It, it helps understand what the book of Daniel is going like what's going on with this young man, Daniel, and, and how... Why is all this happening to God's people, specifically who he promised he would protect? So why is all this happening? Well, it all comes down to chapter 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Jehoiakim, it's King Jehoiakim, is really the, I mean, it's all the people of Judah, but Jehoiakim is their king, and he was an evil, evil king. His father, King Josiah, was one of the greatest kings that Judah had ever seen. God specifically said that there's no other king before him or after him that had a heart like him for God. It, 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 but yet, here we are. Um, you know, his son bringing down the entire country because God told him he was going to do it. And it was his fault. So understanding this, you know, last time we looked at Jeremiah, we kind of showed like what is it God had to say about King Jeho uh, Jehoiakim and the people of Judah in that day. Now we're actually going to look what the historians had to say about like what was it going on with Jehoiakim. Um, so we're going to, you know, because Jehoiakim is all over the Bible. He's in Chronicles. He's in the books of Kings. Um, which are the books and chronicles of the kings of Israel and Judah. So, it, you know, there's a, these are more historical documents. And so we're going to go back to, uh, let's first go back to, the Chronicles is the, the books of Judah and kings are the books of the kings of Israel. So we're going to go to Chronicles first. That's where you're going to get your most information on Jehoiakim. And if we go to First Chronicles 3.15, and this is really kind of a breakdown of the uh, the kings of Judah and their descendants from David on. Now Jehoiakim is the son of Josiah and we see that in 315. The sons of Josiah were Jehoanan, the firstborn, the second Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, and the fourth Shalom. And the sons of Jehoiakim were Jesaniah, his son, and Zedekiah, his son. So King Jehoiakim is the son of King Josiah, and King Josiah and Jehoiakim are some of the last kings of uh, Judah. When you you know they're at the end of Second Chronicles is where you actually read their detail. Um, and let's just first say who is his father Josiah. It says in Second Chronicles thirty four, verse one it says Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned thirty one years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and, he, and walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images. They broke down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and the incense altars, which were above them, he cut down, and the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images, he broke them to pieces and made dust of them, and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. In other words, he was like, you know what, all this stuff that's not of God, tear it down now. And as a matter of fact, scatter the ashes on those who worshipped this crud. Um, but then eventually he passes away, and let's just kind of go, he, he, you know, the long and the short is God was going to keep him alive for much longer, um, and he was going to go off into a battle, and God said don't go, but he went anyway, and he was killed, 
Uh, it's an important lesson on why we should pay attention to God's direction. Uh, but when he dies, it says this in 36, And the people of the land took Jehoaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's place in Jerusalem. Now, that's not Jehoiakim. So they put somebody else in place, but then he was overthrown uh, by Jehoiakim. And then just a few verses later, chap uh, verse 5, Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against him and bound him in bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off some of the articles from the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now that's very important. That's, a lot of people miss the fact that he took a lot of the treasuries from the temple and put them in his temple. Because in Daniel, we're going to see those treasuries play out in a big way. And, and, and so I just want to make that note real quick that that's, in, that's an important note. All right, I'll pick it up in eight. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and what was found against him, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his place. Um, and then what we see then, if we read on in, in Chronicles, is Jehoiachin then continued, um, and it wasn't till after, so essentially like the fall of Jerusalem didn't take place till after Jehoiakim, uh, then Jehoiachin, and uh, then another king was put into place, and, and then it fell. <laughs> like it, it kind of, I think that's the piece a lot of people miss, is that it started with Jehoiakim, uh, but it went through a few more kings before it finally fell. Um, and that's kind of what we saw in, in Jeremiah last time. So it's, it's not like it just, he besieged it one day and let everybody off into captivities like we kind of imagine. This was a lengthy process, um, and we'll see what they have. We'll see with kings. Now, kings doesn't give necessarily a lot of detail on Jehoiakim. His kings are the kings of Israel, uh, but we see Jehoiakim in thir uh, 23. Um, it's interesting what they say about Josiah. Let's start there in 23, uh, verse 28. Now, the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah, which we just read. In his days, Pharaoh, an echo king of Egypt, went to the aid of the king of Assyria and the river Euphrates, and the king Josiah went against him, and Pharaoh, Necho, killed him in Megiddo when he confronted him. Then his servants moved his body in the chariot to Megiddo, brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own tomb, and the people of the land took Jehoaz, the son of Josiah, anointed him, and made him king in his father's place. And then, uh, then we read on to where Je uh, Jehoiakim is, starting in verse 35, because he was, again, over, he, there was another king put in his place, then he overthrew them. So 35, so Jehoiakim gave the silver and gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. So now he's given away all the gold and the silver to Pharaoh. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar hadn't even showed up yet. Like he's... He's buying his allies is what he's trying to do, and he's trying to pay people off from attacking him because he's a coward. Usually murderers are cowards. Pick it up. But he taxed the land to give money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and gold from the people of the land from every one according to his assessment to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he, became king, when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was... Zebedah, the daughter of Padiah, Ruma, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. And now here comes Nebuchadnezzar, verse chapter 24. In the days of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his vessel for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him, and the Lord sent against him raiders, bands of Chaldeans, bands of Syrians, bands of Moabites, and bands of people of Ammon. He sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servants and prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord this came upon Judah, to remove them from his sight because of the sin of Manasseh, according to all that he had done, and also because of the innocent blood that had been shed 
for he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord had not pardoned. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim rested with his fathers, and Jehoiachin his son reigned in his place. And the king of Egypt did not come out of the land anymore, for the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the Euphrates. So now if we go back to Daniel 1, verse 1, and we'll read into chapter 2, or verse 2, it says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and I pray you guys know a lot more, I, I pray that, that like, uh, your eyes are open to what's going on there. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. So we're going to stop there, and that's kind of why I said hold that thought on those treasuries, because that's going to play a big role in this. So, you know, again, ultimately what you have is you have an evil, you know, you have a wonderful king who did everything God asked him to do except for his finality. And his son, I mean, it just shows how a generation can change pretty quick, then sells, you know, or gives away treasures, gold, silver. He gives away the people. Um, for years until he's finally he rebels and he gets taken away and um, other people are put in their, his place and they get killed and taken away and eventually it all falls down and there is then Daniel which you're about to find uh, just being let off and all of that uh, a victim of it all to be quite honest so um, I hope these videos are helping, man. I, I just, I, I really didn't want to just blast through. Here's a king, and then he got conquered by Babylon, and now let's go on. Like, it's important to understand why all this is happening. It's not just that they made a few mistakes. It's about a state of worship, of false gods, of uh, no value of human life, of no value of what is valuable to God, and putting things that are valuable to the world ahead of them. I mean, it's. You know, again, when, when nations like that do that, um, I wholeheartedly believe that America is right. I mean, we're probably a little bit worse than Judah was. And there's only a few things God does to countries like that. It's uh, he either destroys them, he enslaves them, or both. There is no other results. So, um, you know, it hopefully is the heart of God is exposed to these, re you know, understanding Daniel, maybe the heart of America break up, so wake up. So, um, hope these videos are helping. Uh, put your comments below if you have any. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel to Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests and never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.